<clears throat> pit bulls are not black people. Now, maybe you're thinking to yourself, of course a dog breed is not the same thing as a person of a certain skin color. What a pointless, ridiculous, stupid statement that you're making. And just what are you getting at with this? But just hear me out for this video. I think it's pretty well known that pit bulls have a bit of a reputation around them. Uh, You know, a lot of people are really afraid of pit bulls in particular you know, compared to any other dog breed. Uh, people, people, you know, will claim that pit bulls are genetically, you know, it's in their nature to be more aggressive or more violent. Um, and so this is a good reason to be kind of wary or, you know, uh, afraid of pit bulls. But, you know, on the other hand, a lot of people will claim that it's really not pit bulls that are the problem, but it's pit bull owners that are the problem. You know, a lot of bad pit bull owners because, you know, probably because of the reputation that pit bulls have, uh, they tend to just attract a lot of people who value that, uh, those traits that are associated with pit bulls, like the negative traits of them being like aggressive or violent, you know, uh, people like tend to seek pit bulls out for uh that you know um that status that they have in the culture and they try to you know kind of promote those traits and so that's why you maybe you would end up with like violent pit bulls and it's not because like pit bulls are genetically more violent but just because people will seek pit bulls out and uh raise more violent pit bulls um And maybe you already kind of see how race might play into this debate because it's literally the same arguments that people will use when it comes to like black people, uh, where people will say like racist people will claim that black people are like, it's in their genes to be more racist or, or not to be more racist. It's in their genes to be more violent or aggressive, uh, or to, they have a genetic predisposition to committing crime. Uh, or on the other hand, like non-racist people would argue that like it's environmental reasons that lead to, uh, the fact that black people commit more crime. Um, you know, a lot of like poverty correlates a lot more with crime than race. And, uh, a lot of black people just tend to be in impoverished circumstances in America. So it makes sense that, uh, black people would be compared to other races. If you look through a racial lens, more violent, but that's just because they're also more poor and poverty is really the indicator of crime. So it's just, it's a nature versus nurture debate. Uh, the same one as with pit bulls, um, where, you know, what you're getting down to is, like, is it the pit bull and its genes, or is it just the environment that it's in? You know, is it, is it that black people have a genetic makeup that makes them more violent, or is it the environment that black people tend to be in? And, uh, but, like, how similar really are these two situations? Uh, because I want to kind of make the case that they're actually pretty dissimilar, And, uh, that maybe people, well-meaning people who are opposed to racism for very valid and good reasons that I myself share, um, are applying this, is applying like the same good intent to pit bulls, uh, thinking that the situations are more similar than they are, um, when in reality, I think that the nature of pit bulls is a lot uh, more gray and murky than we give it credit for. And that's what I want to get into. So let's talk about some of the facts around these cases. Dogs are not humans, and 
dog breeds and skin color of people do not work the same way. Uh, I think the history of pit bulls is pretty relevant to this debate. Um, pit bulls were literally bred for dog fighting, like in pits. Um, hence the name. And, uh, like the way basically dog breeding works is that, like, certain traits that are deemed desirable are kind of selected for by the breeders and the ones that possess those traits are kind of the ones selected to breed in hopes of like furthering those traits along so like if you were to notice dogs that win fights more often or you know get benefits for being more tenacious or aggressive like we could imagine how these traits could be beneficial to dogs that are trying to fight um then like it's kind of the history of the pit bull of being selected to you know not give up in fights and to hold on to the end and fight and win their fights you know um and to be aggressive uh these were all like desirable things in fights and so like pit bulls dogs that were trained to be successful in fights uh is it really that unfathomable that maybe some of these dogs would have a predisposition to these traits? Like, there's no intention behind uh, skin color. Like, there's no uh, higher uh, being. I mean, like, I don't think that, even if you believe in God, I don't think that God could be, like, described as doing this. There's not, like, a higher being that's, like, looking down on races and being like, hmm, black people, it's it's desirable to have them be the crime people. So we're going to kind of condition them and select them to be more likely to be criminals to kind of further this along within this group of people. Even if breeds and skin color did work that way, there's not like the intention at the top to like direct the kind of genetic uh history to like be the case that black people are genetically more likely to be that way like there clearly is for pit bulls so that's a pretty i think hugely relevant point that uh shows that these incidents are dissimilar and that there's more of a reason to think that pit bulls might be genetically predisposed to a certain type of behavior more so than a person of a certain skin color. I think where this gets tricky is when it comes to uh, deciding whether or not pit bulls are genetically, specifically more likely to be violent towards humans. Um, is I think the research on whether or not pit bulls are, uh, like, by nature, more likely to be aggressive to humans is a bit inconclusive. I, I see a lot of research showing that it, uh, it seems like it may be the case, but I also see a lot of research saying that, uh, even though the numbers may point this way, that there is a lot of other reasons that could explain the, uh, disparities that we see. Um, and so researchers, I think are not very, uh, much in agreement with whether or not pit bulls are genetically more, uh, likely to be violent towards humans, but I think there are two things that seem pretty well agreed upon. Um, and that is one that pit bulls are genetically more likely to be aggressive towards other dogs. Um, and two that bites from pit bulls tend to be far more severe than bites from other breeds of dogs. Um, and I think that the, uh, for the point about pit bulls being more aggressive to other dogs, uh, I think this is pretty easily explainable by the genetic history I mentioned about pit bulls, uh, with them being bred to fight dogs. I think that's a pretty good explanation for why pit bulls have a tendency or a natural proclivity to being more violent to other dogs. Um, 
And when it comes to pit bull bites, uh, first there's a big misconception around pit bulls that I want to address. Uh, there's a big belief that pit bulls have a uh, different jaw than other types of dogs. That there's this misconception that people have that pit bulls have a have a jaw that like has a mechanism that locks in. So like once a pit bull bites, there's like a, the idea is that like some mechanism in its jaw like locks in so that it like it stays shut. Um, past I guess what the pit bull would will to whether or not to open it but this is actually just uh completely not true um and in reality pit bulls just have a natural proclivity to not release their grip uh with their jaw um it's it's a very well understood fact about pit bulls and i think terriers in general that uh they have very strong uh grips with their jaws and they have like a fierce unwillingness to release their grip to the fact that people or to the point or, or to the degree that people have even come up with like extraneous means of getting pit bulls to release their grips on them like one of these involves like uh like breaking like a capsule of ammonium like near the nose of a pit bull so like it'll smell the ammonium and i guess that gets a pit bull to release its grip like people who had to go out of their way to find out these like methods of getting a pit bull to release its grip because it's just like that hard to do because they're just that fierce and that strong in their grip and and they're just that damaging so um pit bulls uh do seem to have some uh pretty well seen uh pretty well researched and agreed upon um proclivities i would say towards aggressive behavior to other dogs and uh in the event that a pit bull uh bites another human or, or another animal uh that the bites will be far more severe than bites of other breeds of dogs all of this has been so far without mentioning like a pretty huge point also when it comes to like the difference between dogs and humans like unironically uh to point out like the level of higher order uh processing and like awareness that humans are capable of that dogs are not capable of that gives them more ability to regulate and control their behavior uh you know basically humans have a lot more control over themselves and what they do than dogs do uh dogs are creatures of instinct through and through um whereas humans have you know a a, a higher level of consciousness and self-awareness and ability to reflect uh that dogs just do not possess and um and so dogs uh when dogs act out there's no like a awareness uh in like a conscious level of what the dog is doing um and there's no like uh ability to like reflect and think about like the consequences of its action uh like humans have so um this is just like a huge point that like uh even if a certain person has maybe a proclivity towards a certain behavior um environmental factors can like overcome this proclivity with humans in a way that they can't with dogs necessarily um because dogs are a lot more bound to their natural inclinations or proclivities uh due to their lower state of consciousness and awareness than humans uh this is and this is just an unfortunate fact of of nature and of uh animals and of consciousness that humans just have a uniquely uh uh complex level of control and of their consciousness compared to other animals from what we can tell not all pit bulls are going to become violent and bite other dogs or human beings but statistically more will than any other breed of dog and with greater severity your dog may be very friendly with you but I think if it's, you know, 
if other human beings, other intelligent human beings with a higher level of consciousness can have a hard time trusting something unfamiliar like a pit bull, I don't think it's so inconceivable that a simpler, lower consciousness being like a pit bull would potentially have a hard time trusting an unfamiliar creature like another human being. 